Alright guys, welcome to kind of an impromptu video. Um, I was going through and doing something for the uh, Base 11 project, and um, I was going to go ahead and get ready to do a drawing after I made this assembly right here. And um, I figured I'd take you through and uh, let you follow along as I, as I do that drawing. And I'll show you, and I'll talk through it, and I'll show you some kind of cool features. Um, so one thing to notice is that um, I created a bill of materials for all the assembly parts here. Um, I will show you how to do that in the assembly video uh, when showing you how to make go ahead and make an assembly um, because this doing this in the assembly here instead of doing it in the drawing will actually make your life easier in the drawing itself um, and also uh, note uh, well yeah obviously I already have this done so um, I'm just going to go ahead and make a drawing. So I'm just going to go file, then I'm going to go down to scroll down to make drawing from assembly. And I'm just going to go ahead and click that. So once you go that, um, go ahead and click that, it'll start the process of starting a drawing and you'll be greeted with this little menu right here. Um, and essentially what this does is it tells you a whole bunch of different types of drawing sizes. Um, and a lot of this um, it really just depends on actual paper size because they range from letter uh, paper to these giant like four to eight feet like engineering drawings are pretty cool but um, for our purpose um, I would go to um, a landscape or portrait probably most of the time you're going to use portrait but it really depends on what you want to do um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and use um, a, com um, a custom one that I made um, because it's uh, I just do so many of these it's just easier to <laughs> um, make your own um, and so you can actually go ahead and click one of those default ones and if you want to change the sheet format to something that works better for you you can always go to sheet format and then go to edit sheet and then you can change a whole bunch of these uh, lines you can delete text add text um, and then these are call outs to um, well, descriptions and, uh, and part files. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start importing my drawing. So um, you can drag and drop in two ways. You can either go over here. Um, there's a, a tab on your right-hand side that has a little house, a library file, and then it has this um, view palette button, which looks like a drawing file. You just click that. Um, and it'll load your part that you um, started the new drawing in. And if you do not start a drawing from an open assembly or part, you're going to have to go and look for a part by using the, th the three dots right here. Then you browse for your parts, and then you, uh, then you can open them. But for now, um, I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop the front, the, the front um, view and you can choose which one to start off with but usually it's good to just start off with the front and then go right and then top and then do an isometric um, but for this case um, I'm not gonna go ahead and I'm only gonna use a front and an isometric um, and I might use um, a top down I'm, I'm just gonna ignore another right hand view because it's essentially the same exact thing again so there's no point but um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one, and before I go ahead and start keep clicking, you can scroll over to the left-hand side, and you can actually start assigning your own um, scales. So if you want to, uh, if you want to make this bigger, you can make it one in ninety, and it should. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I got to go in here. There we go. Um, but all right, so. I do want to scale this, but right now um, I really want to flip it over on its side and then um, then expand it so that I have more room. So to do that, you actually click on your um, drawing um, window. There, there's kind of like a little box uh, in the area. Make sure you click on that. Right click it, and then you're going to want to go to zoom, pan, rotate, and then rotate view. And then from here, you can just flip it on its side. And then you can you can also in, uh, enter a degree up here if you want to, but I just snapped it to 90. Um, I'm going to hit apply, exit out of that. Um, and now this is where I'm going to want to go ahead and change. First of all, change the uh, type of view. So I'm going to want to go with uh, shaded with edges so then you can actually see. Um, 
the different colors and textures I've applied. Um, and I will show you how to do that um, later on. Um, but for now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and boost this up. So for scale, you're going to want to go to use custom scale. Most of the time it goes to sheet scale. You can update your sheet scale up here in file properties um, and go to I thought you could update it up there. Huh. Interesting. I will have to find out where you can update that. But for the most part, uh, you can just go ahead here, hit use custom scale. I always go to user refine. And then I just honestly keep entering numbers until it gets the size I want. Oops. Yeah, so there we go. I want to take the majority of the... Um, the page, and I'm actually going to be making a multi-page or multi-sheet um, kind of drawing, detailing different parts and having some notes. Um, but this is going to, I'm just going to show you guys the overview page um, and how you can um, add dimensions and things like that. Um, and uh, if you have a bill of materials, how you can input it in here. Um, but for now, um, this is this is good. Um, this is kind of what I need for now, because uh, I'm just doing a general overview, uh, an overview of the um, basic dimensions of the vehicle. So I'm just going to do diameter, length, um, some fin positions, and then I'm going to do section uh, names and part numbers and a bill of materials here, and have some notes, uh, general notes on it. And then on the next pages, I'm going to do more detailed things on the fins and nose cone, um, and have a last page on uh, on um, some more notes and uh, considerations and assumptions we've kind of made, because essentially what we want to try to do is have this as a uh, as like a, a few pager that you can just hand um, somebody so they would be able to understand uh, where we are at in the uh, design process. So um, to start, you can either hit S and then go to Smart Dimensions. That's your going to be your fast way. Otherwise, you can just go up here to Annotation, Smart Dimension, and then basically to do Smart Dimensions, you just click from one line to the next oops oh, come on. yeah uh, it's been a long day let's go all right cool and yes uh, so we are also we are also changing into inches um, because um, uh, a consideration that went into uh, the design of this uh, vehicle is um, using standardized um, structural components that we can find pretty much anywhere. And so we're just going to buy 14 uh, inch diameter uh, aluminum tubing um, at a certain thickness. Um, we have to determine that thickness, um, but that shouldn't be much longer till, till we determine that. Um, but this is going to be a f uh, basic dimensions for flight profile, um, given a maximum gross takeoff weight so then we can start running some analysis uh, on the uh, flight dynamics part okay so we got that 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 actually gonna move this up um, oh and another cool thing is that if you need to hide parts or change things about the part you can right click it you can go show hide hide component and then then you can see inside what would be in that area so right now you can see in that this is a structural tank right here, um, and it's actually part of the um, the vehicle shell, um, and we just have connectors essentially that, that sit right there uh, in between. But uh, and then that was the helium tank, and obviously there's there's no piping routings yet, um, but we will be adding those later, and we'll have to be sending those analysis to avionics as well because it's going to be going outside of the vehicle, and, and that's going to um, affect its uh, um, stability and all that. But for now, so that's pretty much how you do dimensions. Smart dimensions is pretty much going to be your go-to. It's going to be the one you use the most of. Um, and I will actually probably make this, I will probably add the uh, metric equivalent. So to to add kind of notes, because you can add um, text and notes to your dimension text. So say you can say total length and oops, come on, I can't even goddamn spell. All right, 
and you can kind of edit how you want. Um, I'm kind of a snob about how I do everything, so <laughs> I, I like to make it look very nice. That's my OCD, I swear. Alright, um, we're going to go with... Uh, I need conversion. Where's Google when you need it? Alright guys, um, welcome back. So, um, this probably looks a lot different than what it did before. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through what I did. Um, and sorry if this looks really busy right now. Um, I'm working on um, uh, editing fonts and, and dimensions and, and all that to make this look a lot nicer. But um, for the first thing, I think that is the main thing that I changed is that um, I actually went ahead and I um, made uh, some of the parts of the vehicle um, transparent. So then you can actually see some of the inner components because um, I need to be able to... Uh, indicate where a start of a tank is versus the end of a tank is um, so then I can do some very rudimentary uh, center of gravity calculations um, because we know how much fluid we need in each of these um, tanks essentially and we can make a guess using the max um, mass of the vehicle uh, and we can try to make a guess of where center of gravity is um, for the first thing is so to actually go ahead and make this uh, transparent like I did here you're actually gonna have to go back into your model um, and all you're gonna really have to do is right click on your part and hit the change transparency tab a little button um, so you can either do it in here uh, change transparency it's next to suppress and hide components but hide completely just gets rid of it um, and the only way to bring it back is either control Z or if you go to your design window over here um, there's, you can see it hidden when it's a little box that's, well, not yellow, essentially. You just right-click it and you hit Show Components. Um, and you can actually uh, also change transparency over here on this side. All you have to do is just right-click and then same thing, change transparency. Uh, but yeah, so that's how I did that. Um, and I'm also going to use this transparency to, to talk about mounting the tanks. Um, and these uh, inter-tank designs and, and things like that. Um, and uh, also to note these uh, flanges here, um, these are the really big ones that we use on the, the test stand. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably change these for the smaller ones later, but for now, I, I really just, I just need to get uh, major dimensions out to avionics. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, but so that's how you change the transparency. Um, and um, even though you change the transparency of the part, uh, you will still not be able to necessarily snap to um, any of your sketch lines that, that you want to put or uh, smart dimensions. You won't be able to actually snap to the, um, the components that are inside of others. So what I tend to do is I actually go over here to the sketch tab and I just use either a line or a center line and I just look about roughly where it is. And then I just make my own line and I use that to, to use my dimensions. Um, especially for things that are really um, preliminary and first stage, like this is fine. Um, but if you'd want to go ahead and actually make sure that you have this dimension, you'd have to hide this part. Um, or you'd have to do a slice cut into it, cut it in half completely, and then you would have access uh, to to the um, line to snap to. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, and yeah, so I went ahead and uh, I marked some of the important things um, that are good to know right off the bat. And um, I actually went ahead and I changed some of the fonts. So here, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So what you're going to want to do is um, you're going to want to click on your dimension. You're going to want to go to other. Um, this use document font will be checked and you can see that now it looks like everything else. So what you're going to want to do is uncheck it, go to font, um, and then this is where you can change your fonts for your text um, to whatever you want. I usually just use the standard um, font that it comes with um, and then regular, bold, italic, bold, italic. Um, I'm just going ahead and I'm going to bold um, some of the important dimensions that are that are I guess, well, more crucial. 
Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and make the um, other dimensions a little smaller and not bolded. So then they'll kind of blend back a little more. So it won't. Uh, so all these numbers won't look so intimidating. Essentially, and you'll be able to pick out information you need. I did, and I'll go for ten for things that I want kind of like to blend in the background. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue doing this, and then I'll check back in with you guys with the when I go ahead and add the table of, uh, of contents, and I start ballooning some of this and doing detailed views and things like that. Um, so I'll be back. All right, all right, guys. So few things that I'm thinking about doing. Um, so I feel like I put a lot of dimensions here. So what I'm actually going to do is um, I made another uh, sheet, essentially. And you can do that just by hitting the little Add Sheet button. And you can rename them by hitting Right button and hitting Rename. And you can name them to whatever you want. Um, so what I did is that I just remade a new sheet. OK, whatever. That's good. Um, I made a new sheet. And um, I put it before the other one, and I made it an isometric view. Um, so I did that just by hitting over here, uh, hitting refresh, making sure that my part is up to date, and then I just grabbed it and brought it over there. And so that is my iso uh, isographic view of the assembly that I want. Um, and at this point, this is where I'm thinking about using um, or putting my bill of materials right here and then having... Um, balloons uh, showing what each part is. So to actually do this, is you go make sure you're in the annotation um, tab in the assembly, and then you're going to want to hit tables, and you're going to want to hit bill of materials. Then you're going to select your part or your assembly that you want your bill of materials to be from, and you can either choose to create a new table or copy existing table. But if you remember in the assembly over here, oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm opening this, I can't. But in the, um, in the assembly, I had a, um, I already created a bill of materials essentially in the assembly itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy that one, and uh, I'm going to hit OK. And then at this point, it transfers over the um, bill of materials I made in the other one. Um, and your bill of materials will not look like this. Essentially, it will have an item number, a part number, and then it will have a description and then a quantity. And it takes these values or um, um, essentially your numbers, your quantities, and your part names from each individual part and what it is saved as. You can always edit this by um, double clicking um, and changing the name and it, it should stay linked um, so um, if you know you want to call this a nose cone but you didn't essentially name it this which you, which you see here you can always change it um, and then whenever you go back in your part and you add more of them or you take them off your quantity should update as well um, because it will it will reference this number as opposed to the name to um, the balloons. And I'm going to show you how to use those. So actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and shrink my table, um, make sure it fits. So I'm not wasting a whole ton of space. But essentially, everything seemed to have copied over well. So I'm not really going to do anything crazy. I'm just going to shrink it down. Um, you can always change the font and stuff like that, and I might do that later. Um, but for now, this is this is good enough to get the point across. And then I'm going to put it down on this corner. I don't even know why I have this proprietary thing here. I should just get rid of that. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, so then there you go. You got your item, you got your bill of materials here, and now you got your part. So to actually um, put a number associated with each part, um, and that will reference with this table, you go up here to annotation. You're going to want a balloon. Um, so just hit balloon, and then this is where you can start selecting your parts and dropping down a little bubble. And it will put your part number, um, but say if you want to change what's in this bubble, you can always uh, click on a part here, go over to the left hand side where your design or this little window is, and you can go to, you can write a text in there. So instead of having a number, you can. You can say, you can say, like if you had a subcomponent, you can go one dot a, and then it makes it one dot a, which is really cool. Um, that's really useful if you tend to mess up the bill of materials or if you're changing something. Like, the, adding text is really nice, and it's also a cool way to add um, uh, quick notes to something. 
and you can actually change the size of it. You can go up to five or user defined characters. So do you make the circle bigger so more letters and numbers can fit in there? Um, but for the most part, um, you just stick with one or two. Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that and put the right balloon. Oop. So I'm going to go here and because I want to select this sphere because I want to select that uh, helium tank that we're using to pressurize. Um, so and it, since it is underneath another part, I'm going to have to right click and hit select other. And then I'm going to scroll through this list until I find um, the face that I want. And then that's that essentially, and I'm just going to keep doing that, and I'm going to move these um, bubbles later, and I'm going to change some stuff, but for now, this is fine. Um, these are my fins, and thrust structure, oh, and, and well, technically, it's all in my engine section, um, so I'm just going to reference this as all eight, so I'm going to change that, so you can actually change where things reference to just by moving the dot. I do not want engine section skin. I do not want that. So to delete that, you can just right click on a row and hit delete. Um, the reason is, is that in my assembly, I have these as two individual parts, but um, for the sake of this quick overview, I'm just going to reference it all as one part. And then what will end up happening is that each of these sections are referenced as, as a part number and then later on, what will I what I will do is for say for the tank, the tanks are going to be made in four or five different pieces. So the LOX tank parts are going to be five, five dot A through five dot G or whatever or however many parts I end up putting in there. Um, so that's this is just assigning a um, sub assembly number to each of these. Um, and I think that's kind of it for now. Um, I'm going to go more, I'm going to do some, well actually, you know, I might as well show you some uh, detailed view stuff because I'm going to have to do that anyway. So um, if you want to call attention to a certain area or if you have a big blowout of a, of a big assembly like this and then you want to say you want to do more, um, you want to feature the fins in its own thing so you can show dimensions of it. Um, one cool way and that I really like is using detail view. So what you're going to want to do is go to view layout, go to detail view, circle your area of interest essentially, and you're going to want to just drag that puppy out and put them wherever you want. And this is actually a really cool features actually. You can go into the section view. So say if you just want to show the fin, um, despite it resting on the, the vehicle body, you can you can right click each component and you can go to show hide and you can say hide component. And you can do this for everything in this that's viewed here. And wait, let me see if I can show. Oops, no, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, so, but you can, you can essentially hide everything that you do not want. Um, and then you can use this to highlight um, certain aspects of, uh, of your bigger assemblies that you want. Da, da, da. Yeah, so there's a lot you can do. So essentially, I just want to show this, and I would really want to get rid of this post. So I'm going to, yeah, there you go. So you can actually hide bodies of uh, parts itself just by going to sh uh, hide body instead. Um, so now I have my fin here. Um, I actually want to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go one in 10. Yeah. And I'm gonna drag the detail over here. I'm just gonna do, move it around a little bit. Um, and you can edit some parts about this. So say if you wanted to show a ring around this, you can do, oh yeah, well this, this edits how it looks up here. So you can do broken circle with leader without, and you can move this wherever you want. This is all just personal touch. So mess around with it however you want. I usually like broken circle, um, and I do not want document font. I want my own font because I hate that. It's too big. One ten. All right. So detail A. Um, this tells you the scale of it too, um, so you don't get confused. Or people when they look at it, they don't get confused. 
Um, and then this is where you can go actually go ahead and start detailing smart dimensions. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Um, and for fins, I mean, we're just going to want to do some of the major components. We're just going to do semi span, root cord, tip cord, um, slant angle. Um, oh yeah, and another thing is if you, since this part doesn't exist and we're not exactly sure if this is how it will look, um, I don't want two decimal places. I feel like that's just not representative of what it is. So we can actually go ahead and you can either do none, um, one decimal place. Um, so in your dimension window, you just go down to tolerance or position. You can do basic. Um, you can do bilateral, you can do a whole bunch of different things, so this will give you a plus and a minus range. Um, uh, these are really cool, especially when you're ready to give stuff to the machine shop. Um, they're going to love you for this, so I would recommend that you learn how to do this, and you just add plus and minus here. So if we know that we can go into uh, five hundredths, I guess. We can go plus. Oh yeah, since we have two, we can go there. Yeah, and save. You can just mess around, do whatever you want. Um, but this tells them that maximum plus five tolerance, minimum ten tolerance. Pretty cool. Um, there are some standards out there, so keep an eye out for those. But for the most part, um, the um, dimensions they give you in the SOLIDWORKS are pretty much the, the standards because um, they'll have a tolerant, their own tolerance window down here. I edited my own so you will have one to kind of work off with. Now why the hell are you not working? Um, but yeah that's how you use detail view and there's other things that you can do like section view so you can actually cut this model in half and look at it in a different way. Um, you can add center lines, blocks, um, weld symbols. So if you know, say for instance, that you're going to weld your fin to your main structure, you can you can go into here, select your weld symbols. If you know if it's going to be a butt weld, um, V weld, um, there's a whole bunch of different ones. So, but that'll come more when you're ready for manufacturing. So just for now, usually I just tend to do butt welds for now. And then it changes the uh, symbol along with what you're doing. And um, this is where you can actually reference these in a uh, welding table here, a weld table. And that'll detail all your welds and your lengths. Um, so then you can, your, the machine shop can better prepare for the amount of welding material they'll need um, and what exactly they're getting themselves into. Uh, so, I mean, I'm going to continue going ahead with this drawing package, and um, I'll check back in with you guys if anything else kind of cool comes up, or I'll, or otherwise I'll see you way at the end when I'm done. Um, but, yeah, if you got any questions, just let me know in the comments, and I'll go over it a little deeper, because I know this is kind of impromptu. I'm just going over what I'm doing in a drawing, and I'm kind of talking my way through it. Um, I will try to make an actual more official um, drawing video along with the assembly so then you'll be better able to understand what everything does um, but yeah I'll, I'll see you guys in a bit alright guys um, so I think I'm at the point where I'm pretty much done or I'm, I'm happy with what everything or how everything came out um, um, as you can see I pretty much just added a whole bunch of annotations added a bunch of notes um, which you can do up here, you just click on your note button and then you can click on a part and you can add a little uh, um, a little label, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, and then I also use the note just to create, just to tell you about some um, general um, assumptions and uh, progress of, of what's going to change and what is actually um, useful. Um, but so this is the first page, uh, and as you can see, sheet one of two. And when I go to dimensions, sheet two of two. Um, nice thing, it, it auto updates every time you add a, a sheet, so that's really nice. You don't really have to do anything more than that. Um, 
And yeah, so on this dimension page, um, again, I, yeah, I just added some more notes um, and I added um, important information. So for avionics, they're gonna need the, the type of the nose cone. So I gave them the equation on how to do it. Um, I gave them dimensions of the fin, gave them placements of all the major uh, su subcomponents of the vehicle. And then I, I put it in a table here so, so it's easier to, to see and understand. Um, but at this point, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty much ready to um, export it. Um, and you can export it a few different ways. Um, usually what I'll tend to do is export it as a PDF and a JPEG or a PNG um, just to make it easier. Um, and so everyone can access the file. Um, and usually I'll also print it out. Um, I like having these things handy because then you can draw on them, you can talk about it, and you can show uh, and discuss. Uh, but usually, so I'm going to go down to here. So when you go save as, um, you're just going to find yourself in a folder wherever you started the part. Find your folder that you want to save it in. And you're going to go to save as type. And you're just going to scroll down to JPEG, PNG, DXF, whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to go PDF. Uh, I already saved it there. I'm just going to save it again. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the JPEG. Oh, yeah. And this tells you um, which sheets you want or which uh, yeah pages you want uh, exported. You want both, so just they're both they're all uh, activated by default. Um, but if you want to choose specific ones or leave specific ones out, you can always uh, select those in there. But yeah, you just go ahead and save that. Um, and now I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. Now JPEG, um, I'd recommend because it literally saves your screen. So what I would try to do is try to match your uh, your view screen with the sizing of your drawing as much as possible so then you don't run into some scaling issues later on. So I'm just gonna blow it up like that. So what I was just doing is if you hold control and then you use middle mouse button you can move it around. Um, same thing with just middle mouse button. Um, but then to zoom in a little bit at a time like this you hold shift and you use your mouse key and you move in. Uh, you hold shift and you hold your middle mouse button and you zoom in and you zoom out. Um, so I'm just going to scale it and then move it. Okay, it's good enough. Um, and then this is where I'm just going to hit save as and JPEG. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much essentially it. Um, and uh, oh yeah well if you want to print it out like I am you just go up here hit, you, hit your little print button uh, make sure you're printing in the right place make sure you got your right settings you want um, and then just hit print um, and that's pretty much it for this kind of impromptu uh, drawing video um, I will try to make something a little more comprehensive and um, step by step so you can understand what everything does but it's, it's pretty straightforward for the most part you just drag um, models from over here or you can insert them uh, through standard view and model view and stuff like that drag them over um, and then smart dimensions just works pretty much exactly the same as parts and assemblies so they're pretty intuitive um, the build materials is something that's a little more difficult um, and is a little confusing so I'll go over that a little more in depth in the assembly video um, and show you how to set that up. But thanks, thanks for tuning in.